I think if, if we'd had um, proper management, we could have sailed through the bad times. And the, the, but we were just out running out of control. We were making everything up as we went along. There was no guidance to us. Kurd was just, uh, you know, spending everything we earned quick as, as that, uh, sending us out on tour around the world for no reason. No, there was no reason to it, and they, we were just burning and spiraling out of control. Um, yeah. It's a shame there's no code of ethics, like there's a code of ethics in a bike gang. Yeah, yeah, no, well, definitely. We, 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 were, we were the gang of four, you know, that we did look after each other. And it's the same feeling as we've always had in our little Tunbridge Wells gang. You do look after each other. Um, it's just unfortunately, you know, from being so fucking high to so low with such a short space of time, you know. So we knew we had to shape up or ship out, you know. So the shaping up, was that was that changing direction and going and doing this album that wound up being, being the end of the line? It morphed into that. I think if Kurt had released the branded album, the second album, and he put the money from the first album, which he sold millions to, and we did the branded album, which was a full-on punk album with um, heavy songs about, you know, Russia coming to kill us. It was a Sign of the Times album, but it was really happening and really quite... And I've, I've heard some of the songs recently. Our record company in America sent, them, sent us original recordings. Um, I've forgotten how good those songs were. And if we had released them on the back of We Are The League, then the crime album, then we would have put out probably live in Yugoslavia, but the crime album would never have occurred. It, we would have then gone in following the same mode of We Are The League branded, and the crime album would have been punk, aggressive album. But as it was, it sort of pitted along the way, up pops Doug with 20 grand, it changed the whole feel of everything. We were bored. If like Lemmy said, when I and he said, "Dead true, it's a dead true story." We, because I was mates with Lemmy in the early days, his boat was next to Kurds, so to get the Kurds' boat was on the Thames. We had to climb over Lemmy's boat. Of course, it'd always be there, you know, girls hanging around and all that, and it always said, "Got any gear? Got any gear?" You know, yeah, because he knew I had bikers, and every time we was coming to London, I was popping my bike mates in London first. We'd be armed with fucking shitloads of speed and. Whatever, and so we always go down and do it in Lemmy's boat, and like, and then I'd go out on the town together, fired right up, you know, and then we'd, we'd be out because he, he knew a lot of bike guys I knew as well, and life was pretty good. But of course, he carried on being motorhead, whereas we changed into the league, uh, and and when we had recorded um, the crime album. We then did a promo, Doug did put up a promo um, show for us. I think it was, a, uh, it was called something like Meltdown or something. It was a show where we were going to play a few songs there and Motrip on the show as well. And of course, I met Lemmy in the corridor after we did our filming. He said, what the fuck's happened to the anti Nova League? I said, what's mate? He says, you fucking album shit. <laughs> you know. Fucking said my album shit. I said, you fucking album shit. <laughs> dumb answer. It was a dumb answer. I don't think I anything to say. You know, he just hit the nail right on the head. The album was fucking shit. And that's it. We shouldn't have been there. And he just said, what's happened to you? Anthony Nobody. And we wasn't sure what happened to it. But but that was the first calling that we, we had fucked up badly. We still, at that time, went on television, played it, thinking that we were the next Duran Duran. Strange things, drugs and, and money does to you. So it, it um, yeah, that's when we knew it, it was it was the end. Um, we'd come out of the um, dangerous drug period and trying to become musicians because Doug popped up 20 grand and everything was going to be wonderful. So we'd gone past the point of um, uh, self-destruction, but we'd come out of it as, as this fucking Nancy band of weird expectations it was just so not anti Nova league and when you look back at it there you think where the fuck oh, i wish i'd listened to lemmy <laughs> come back and haunt me now lemmy <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah it, it, it was a self-destruct mode but instead of killing yourself we just killed the band simple you know 
which um, looking back I said to you you have to make one mistake to make sure you don't make it again if you make the same mistake twice you shouldn't be doing it uh, simple so that brings us really neatly to um, to post Metallica and the, the resurrection and what was in your mind you know was this stuff in your mind when you thought about going getting the band back together again and and starting to make music again I don't think music side come into it. I think just the buzz of being on stage. It just suddenly thought, this is where I belong to be. You know, this is what I've missed again. You know, I I like throwing myself about, shouting, sweating. To me, I go on stage, no different than I'm going into a bare knuckle fight. It's no difference. It's me versus them, and there's the last man standing. And, it, and people know you put so much effort into it. You know, and they, they always come back and say, fuck me, he was on there for an hour and a half or something, you know. How old are you? <laughs> I mean, I love that feel that it's the same thing. If you're going to fight, you're going to go down and you're going to stand up. It's the same attitude. And I think when being on stage with him suddenly made me realise what I've missed out on. Um, and then getting back on the stage. Because when we started off again in the early 90s, it was difficult. It wasn't much of a scene. Nobody's really interested in old, blown out old punk band, you know. It wasn't much out then, and, and I think uh, it was a struggle. But because I liked performing punk music, and as simple as that, it, I, I pushed on with it, I pushed on. You know, yeah, there's no money in punk, but I pushed on for the simple fact that I just liked being in a punk band. And I genuinely know I'm lucky enough to be able to do it. You know, I have a unique stage presence, and I think that's uh, something I feed off of, and it feeds off me. You know? You know, and so, we're happily married. <laughs> so, so um, you come off stage. You you've been on stage with, with Metallica. You're like, right, that's that's yep. where I belong. Yep. I belong on stage. Yep. Did you pick up the phone to? Did you and John then? You and JB then pick up the phone to Magoo yep. and PJ. Could you tell yep. me about that process? Yeah, well, it wasn't PJ because obviously he was well well, well out of the picture. But obviously Winston, uh, Magoo, JB was says, yep. Gilly, you know, no, we didn't bring back Gilly after that because Gilly came in on the last part of the first first belt, but we came back in as a four piece, and then um, for some reason, because Gilly obviously he's a he's an artist and he had his work and that, we then brought us another guitarist back in as a bring to bring it back to a five piece. So we started then trying to do it as a five piece with a lead guitar. Um, which didn't really work. I'm interested in the, the nitty gritty bit, the like, so you and JB, yep. you've had that Metallica experience. Yep. He's been watching you, presumably. He must have gone with you, because yep. he drove yep. you there. Yep. So what happens when you pick up the phone to Magoo and say, what do you reckon, let's do it again? I think he said, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to let you have But he, 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 he see, see, Magoo did, wasn't, um, you know, he loved, Playing the guitar and that, but he wasn't. He didn't. He didn't have the bug like I did because he kept saying, "Well, how long are we going to do this for? How, how long are we going to pack it up for? You know, we'll pack it up soon." But I said, "No, I, I like doing it. You know, I, I can't see why I should suddenly not do it." And so there was no point for me not doing it then. Whereas as Magoo, he, he, he was a, had a full time job and he said, "Well, I'll do it the weekends. I'll do it. I'll do it this and that. You know." And then we had to work around trying to do shows around his his allowance of days off and stuff like that. He said, I've never quit my job over this because there's no money in it, you know. So we just literally did it on high days and holidays and it was just um, uh, just as, as, a, as a hobby. But I just got a buzz right out of it. And, and we had to redo the band and we started moving into what sort of music was doing. Um, sometimes it got a bit heavy, sometimes went back. And then Magoo started writing with me again, um, which we did this, the Scum album, um, which was typically back to him and I again smiling tapping our feet it, we, we were on the right mode then so it, that was enjoyable writing um, um, new type punk songs um, but I think um, deep down nobody JB then said oh I can't do it for his job very difficult to try and take somebody's whole life um, because you change all the time everybody changes and I think the band members had their own changes, they had their own jobs, they had their own families, they had their, you know, you try and get 
four or five men in one room together. Oh, I can't come tomorrow night. Mrs. is out. We've, you know, I've got to look after the kids. You know, there's a million reasons why you can't get five blokes in the same room. So it was a struggle. So we only played, you know, bit by bit. We picked it up bit by bit by bit by bit. And I think the um, uh, after probably about, I don't know, seven years or so, we Winston had had enough. Oh, I can't I can be bothered with this anymore. I, you know, JB, I can't do it in my work. Uh, Magoo, yeah, I'm finding this more difficult. I can't talk, I can't do anything, you know. Whereas I just stood there saying, but I want to carry on. So so obviously we decided then, that I decided then, that um, the anti-Nowhere League would be a long mission. You know, band members would come and go as they want to come and go. Um, Winston could come and go when he wanted, but we'd get standing when he didn't. Magoo would come and get... Barnsley stepped in for Magoo many times in the past, you know, and, and, and this is what we found, that, that we, we were a multi-member band, just to, to use it when you can and when you wanted to. Um, but for me personally, it was always ongoing. I, I, I got the real buzz out of it, whereas they just thought it was just something they could fit in when they wanted to, you know. And I think Magoo, right up till, right up till he wanted to leave, said, uh, you know, well, we're going to quit soon, aren't we? We're, you're, you're quitting it soon. I said, no, I don't want to. So we parted ways and I carried on. He uh, went back to his job full time.